I would like to introduce James Miller. James is my colleague here at OK2A. He is our legal expert. He knows all the laws. He, he can tell you, he can pretty much tell you what the law is if you have any questions. He's also familiar with a lot of the other states on their laws as well. I tell you, he's valuable to OK2A, and it's my pleasure to introduce him. So that being said, there used to just be one law we had to follow, right? Right. Because it's a joke. So uh, <laughs> this is awesome to have. Thank you for coming. Thank you for everyone that sponsored it. This is pretty cool. I've shared this over a bunch of different training uh, group platforms as well because they were interested in what this man has experienced and what he wants to say. So this is going to go a lot farther in this room um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So without further ado, we have, we have uh, Don Spencer who decided to come up. And seeing, seeing as how this year has gone, um, pretty awesome. HB 2597, Constitution Carry passed into law. First bill signed by our new governor. Pretty cool, right? Um, for a long time, he's done this. So, a little bit of background about me. I moved here six years ago, and I was very politically uninvolved. I'd spent some money on you know GOP platforms, NRA, things of that nature. Watched a YouTube video about this, uh, this, this awesome dude in the capital of Oklahoma City named Don Spencer. And I thought, who is this guy? And where am I spending my money and time? So, got in my car, drove down to, drove down to Oklahoma City, attended an OK2A OK meeting, and I went, okay, this is for real. So that's what, 60 bills later? Maybe more? Probably I don't really know. Um, all I know is we had a lot of liberty back. So I'd like to have Don come up here. I'm gonna introduce him. Um, let's give a quick ditty. Come on up, Don. Um, The membership of OK2A okay uh, to show our gratitude. This is from the membership. Um, we've done a couple things for Mr. Spencer, and uh, we had a a cool uh, custom engraved uh, MMP 2.0 Compact 9. It says your name on it. On the top is the uh, In Liberty. 227 when signed into law, and a, kind of a black belt logo of OK2A. So that, that's from the membership of OK2A. Um, now, as you know, uh, being the president of OK2A, Don's salary, he's paid weekly. Oh, yeah. Very weekly. <laughs> uh, meaning he's a volunteer, essentially. So on behalf of, again, the OK2A membership, wanted to present a gift to you. And by all means, that's from all of us. Thank you very much. So we want to say thank you for everything you do. Uh, we appreciate it. And wow. Now, my wife's going to ask me where I bought this. So I, I may need some backup here. Man, this is absolutely stunning. Appreciate it. Jeez. That's, uh, I wish I could say it happens all the time, but uh, maybe it should. Man, that'd be great. Well, uh, I appreciate that very much. What a what a pleasant surprise! Because, like I say, uh, I, I come here to hear Charles tonight, uh, but, but I wanted to get into one thing first. With OK Two A, uh, I've been around long enough to know that evil does not confine itself to where we can always control it. Uh, and it's back in 2012 I started working with Pastor Vineyard in Oklahoma City because it dawned on me, and actually I was convicted by it, the fact that uh, our churches that have schools, that it was a felony for a person to have a gun in a school, private school property. And mostly it was churches that had these. I'm like, you know what? If they can tell us, the state legislature can tell us we can't have a gun, that means they can come back and tell us you can't talk about Jesus Christ. And so for me, that's a problem. Uh, that's a that's a big problem. So uh, the, one of the bills we ran that year was so private schools could uh, could uh, could have firearms on their own property. All they had to do was say, okay, the governing board says it's okay, and and have a have a policy stating so, uh, which made it uh, pretty easy. But let me tell you something: there's nothing easy at that state capitol. It went through all the zoos. The teachers' organizations were against it. Anyone that ever thought about being a teacher. Oh, that there's going to be the old story. Oh, there's going to be blood in the streets and all that stuff. But anyway, we got it passed. 
And then the next year we had to come back and pass so it was clear that you could keep it in your car in the parking lot, even if you're not a teacher or an employee uh, or anything like that. We had to pass that and repeal that part of the felony. So after we got that done, you know, because my, my plan the whole time was if you can make it okay in a private school, why can't it be okay in a public school? Right. And one of the arguments I used all along, are you telling me the kids in a private school are of a higher value than the ones in a public school? <laughs> so we need to equip that. So the next year we repealed the felony for at least having a gun in your car because believe it or not, the previous law, Oklahoma's law, so stupid. If you drove up and you dropped off your kid and you had a gun in your car, it was perfectly legal. But if you drove up and you dropped off your spouse who's a teacher, it was a felony. Because the law specifically said it, you could only drop off a student. Now, if that sounds crazy, oh, a DA would never prosecute that. Oh, yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. And they'll look for just the right one to go do that with. So leading into that, um, uh, it, with all the other things, believe it or not, churches or places of worship were not even on the list of business owners' rights. It was this gray area whether a church could actually even have guns or even defend themselves in it. It was so okay to it. And that's what I did as I got that out and I looked at the business owner's rights. You know what? I thought, all you got to do, right here in this one spot, it, it's just right. Places of worship. So I stuck it in there along with uh, some other private property rights improvements and put that in there. And you know what? Um, even in that state capital, it's pretty hard to vote against God. And that's basically what was coming down to. So there were some no votes on it. Uh, and there was some pushback on it. But, uh, but because we had, OK2A okay, developed, developed its momentum, we were able to push that on through, which led us to uh, two years ago, I think it was two years ago, we had a places of worship bill because I wanted to clarify. And I had the right legislator call and said, I'm concerned about this, which, by the way, he's also gotten several awards from us. They said, I'm concerned about this because that shooting that took place in Texas, what can we do? I said, well, we can't do anything legally to stop that shooter. But what we can do, because Oklahoma has this terrible, terrible thing, is that the liability is not clear that if a church is involved in a self-defense action, that the church can be sued out of existence. I said, there's no doubt, nothing's going to change that whoever discharges that firearm is always going to be responsible for that bullet till it stops. But we can make sure, one, it's not criminal if it's in self-defense, and two, that it reduces the civil liability for the church itself because I could just see a church being sued out of existence. I could just see that. And so uh, many of you know that that wasn't exactly the easiest thing because I see a lot of faces that were up there. That was not the easiest thing to convince people you know what? A church does not need to be sued. Well, what if Granny on the third row jumps up with her 38 and starts shooting? I'm like, high fives to Granny. Because <laughs> uh, the way I know, uh, and, and we'll probably hear tonight, that any, any pushback at all is going to help thwart any effort of evil that it's trying to perpetrate. Any. And like I've even said before, I'd rather be shot with a good guy trying to help than the bad guy. Period. So that's what OK2A has done. And we're going to continue to do. Yes, there was this little bill heard this year. I don't know what was it, constitutional carry or something yeah, like that. I, I forgot what it was. Yeah. Uh, you know why? And we gave a victory lap because we ran it last year and got it passed, but the the governor vetoed it. So you know, hey, let's have a party. Let's let's do it all again. But like I say, folks, constitutional carry. It's introduced at the beginning of February on the sixth. And it is signed into law on the 28th of February. Never, nothing has gone through that. Nothing. And that's because we have established in our, our spot at OK2A. And I tell you, and I, I'm sure the Moms of Man Action are watching right now, it felt really good on that last day when it was voted on in the Senate and goes to the governor's desk and the fact that uh, they had taunted me for years that this was not going to happen and that I was crazy and it's my fault for all the people dying and all that stuff. But they taunted me. It was felt so good they're walking through the hallways putting out this petition showing how no one wants this thing. Literally walking with their tail between their legs and just kind of like, well, we're just doing this, you know, because you know, don't vote for this. And then it goes down there and vote for 40 to 6. 
So it wasn't exactly close. And then the governor's basically beating on his desk, get it down here, I wanna sign it. And uh, it's also because of, uh, I managed to notice that the governor didn't probably want to sign his first bill, be a marijuana bill to sign. <laughs> but he kept his promise, did exactly what he said he would. He said, get it to my desk. He even sent out a tweet the week before, which just gave it the overdrive it already had to get it to, uh, for the enthusiasm to get it there. Uh, I'm grateful to the uh, uh, Senate for working it and also for State Representative John Eccles and all the people who helped present that thing because I can say that, that doesn't happen. And then we've got two other bills passed. Uh, the shockwave, everyone knows it's a 14 inch barrel, basically looks like a shotgun, got a goofy handle on it. Uh, some guy was smart enough to design it where it's legal. But the funny thing, it was legal in California and New York, but it was a felony to have one in Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, I, I love these, these heads turning, I can hear them just snapping necks like, what? Yeah, you know, okay, two is here to take the stupid out of gun laws. That's what <laughs> we've done. We, we are here to take the stupid out of it. And as a CLEAT certified instructor, there's no shortage, we still got plenty to do. So people think, oh, we got constitutional carry, we're done. No, folks, there's people really mad. They spent some really big money to stop us and they'll spend even more to turn this back around against us. And you don't think so, just watch the red flag laws that are gonna be introduced next year. So anyway, I won't take much any time on that, but like I say, if you're not a member of the Oklahoma Second Amendment Association, I have no idea what you're waiting on. We, uh, you know, people sit back and say, well, I'm gonna see what you guys will do. No, we've already done it. We've done it and we're gonna continue to do it and this is how we're gonna do it. We've got a game plan, we stick with it, and like I can say, we work, we work with legislators. I mean, on a personal level. So personal that some of them, I only email their private email address to make sure they can see it pop up and not to their legislative address. Those types of things so we can make things happen, and it's pretty obvious it must work. And we've got a slew of bills that were left over from last year because we only had 38 introduced. <laughs> 38. Yeah, only 38 introduced. And, and it, in all fairness, there was about seven more in the constitutional carry bill, so that they won't all be messed with. But we've got five bills, and two of them are felony repeal bills. Uh, and one of them has to do, my, it's funny, our board of directors has three pastors on it. And so I said, and I warned them, this is what we're doing on this bill. We're gonna help, we're gonna protect the bar. They said, what? I said, that, that's exactly right, because under current law, it's a felony even for an employee in a bar to be able to carry, legally carry a gun in that bar for self-defense. And after we saw what happened in Florida, uh, I'm not gonna sit here and make judgment on what people are doing outside of, of that building, but innocent people walking into a building, there should not be any reason for them to have to face a massacre and we're gonna be responsible here in Oklahoma the same way. So that's one of the felonies we're having repealed, that we're working to repeal. The other repeal for a felony is, believe it or not, most of your gun owners, carriers, if a felon gets in your car while you're in possession of your firearm, they're committing a 10 year, 10, uh, 10 year felony, send them back to jail, whether you, they know you have the gun or not. Stupid, and it's, it's a Fourth and Fifth Amendment violation. Uh, it's it's completely crazy. But Oklahoma is well versed on violating your constitutional rights, and again, we're here to push back on that. And I want to make it perfectly right. clear: constitutional carry goes into effect November the first, two thousand nineteen. You still don't have a right to carry a gun in Oklahoma. We have to fix it. Our state constitution says the right. Uh, your right shall never be prohibited. And then it says, but the legislature can regulate the carrying of weapons. That's the nasty, nasty, nasty part. We've got to pull the legislature completely out of the picture, yeah. unless there is a violation. Uh, so anyway, but that's what we're working on. Now, um, everyone keeping up with me so far? Are we doing all right? <coughs> all right. Um, you know, I myself got involved uh, in this uh, organization but there was two times in my life I had to pull a firearm and point it at a person for the act of self-defense. And thank God I didn't have to squeeze a trigger because the mere presence of that firearm convinced the perpetrator that, you know what, I'm in the wrong place. Especially when you got that red laser dot lid right up around their forehead, that's pretty, pretty convincing. So I've been fortunate that I've not had to, but that's why I'm such a big proponent because I know the mere presence of a firearm can stop crime. Just, just the firearm there. Um, now, I also know it may take more than that to stop evil, and that means discharging the firearm. 
So there's a gentleman here tonight that you've come to see, and I'm ex excited to hear this, but Charles uh, Van Wick is here tonight, 